Hi, I'm Jay McClellan, and today I'm going to show you the CNC motion control system I built for my macro and micro videography setup. I'm currently using five different motorized stages, so this is a five-axis motion control system. I'll put a complete parts list out on my website with a link to it in the video description. In my last video, I went over the mechanical design of the system and how I tried to make it easily adjustable while also minimizing vibration. So you might want to check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. Today I'm using a simple 60mm macro lens that will go up to 1x magnification. So with a 17mm wide sensor in this micro four-thirds camera, my field of view can be as small as 17mm wide. My subject for this demo is a six-spotted tiger beetle and it's just a little bit longer, counting the appendages, than my 17 millimeter wide field of view, so it's a good size for uh, showing it at this magnification. The focus axis of my system is an IEF Werner MS60 motion stage. This is not a very common stage. I found it at an equipment auction and got it pretty inexpensively, and it actually has pretty impressive specs. It's loosely similar to a THK KR20 stage, but uh, more heavily built. A single stage like this can be used for focus stacking, where we acquire a series of images at varying focal points and then combine them in software to get an image with a larger overall depth of focus. I developed a process to create full motion focus stacked videos that combine high magnification, large depth of field, and smooth motion. And it's not easy to get a good result, uh, especially at high magnification. But I've got some cool microscopic videos that I'm working on that I'll be publishing soon, so stay tuned for that. I'm using the same kind of stepper motor on all four linear stages. And it's a dual shaft motor, so I added these knobs on the back that let me move the axes manually. The knobs also add some rotational inertia, which usually reduces vibration, although at some speeds it actually can make it worse. Uh, I'll remove the knob so you can see the back of this motor. These are Oriental Motor Vexta 5-phase stepper motors that I found on eBay. Uh, most common stepper motors have 200 steps per revolution. So they move 1.8 degrees with each step. Some have 400 steps per revolution uh, with 0.9 degrees per step, and that can give somewhat smoother movement with less vibration. These motors have a 0.36 degree step angle, so they have 1,000 steps per revolution, and they have five phases instead of two. The five-phase steppers need a special driver to run them, and with five electromagnetic coils inside instead of two, they can give smoother movement and better micro-stepping compared to the more common two-phase motors. The X and Y axes use THK KR26 linear stages, which have a two millimeter pitch on the lead screws, so they move two millimeters for each complete revolution of the stepper motor. I'd actually prefer a finer one millimeter pitch, but this is the finest pitch available on these stages. They're more robust than the smaller KR20 stages, so they're more stable and less prone to deflection as the load moves around. I got these from a member of the photomacrography.net forum, which I highly recommend if you'd like to learn more about macro and micro photography. I made this aluminum bracket to mount the Z-axis vertically, and it's a smaller KR20 stage, which is not quite as beefy as the X and Y axes, but it weighs less and it has a finer one millimeter lead screw pitch. Even though it's a little less robust, it's rated to support much larger loads than I have, so it's fine for this application. Okay, time out. Uh, in the last shot, I stuck my hand in and clumsily knocked my beetle right off its holder. So I'm gonna show you how I mount them. I've got my, uh, my poor beetle just sitting upside down on this little piece of foam here, and I put it on a laboratory jack so I can turn this knob and, and easily move it up and down. And what I do is I attach it to a little bent pin or needle using Crazy Fix Light Cure Super Glue. It's great stuff, and I'll show you how it works. So I've got my bent needle clamped in this alligator clip, and I'm going to bring the subject up just underneath it, just to get it positioned about right, so it's just about where I want it to glue, be glued on. And then I back it down away. I put just a tiny bit of the super glue on a piece of paper and bring it up under the pin so that uh, I can wipe a little bit off onto the bottom of the pin. It doesn't take much. And then I turn the screw on the lab jack to bring my subject right up under the pin until it just contacts and the glue spreads out just a little bit. 
And now I've turned my other lights down so you can see I come in with the little ultraviolet lamp, a little LED lamp that comes with the glue and just hit it from several different angles. It doesn't take very long, just a few seconds and that ultraviolet cures the super glue. And now I can lower the jack away and the bug is glued on. The rotation axis is in some ways the most important for what I'm doing because it most strongly conveys the three-dimensional shape of the subject when it rotates. I tried several different rotation stages, uh, starting with just a bare stepper motor and working up in cost until I finally settled on this one from Thor Labs. I found one on eBay, so it was a lot less expensive than buying a new one, but it still cost me more than all of the other axes combined. And it's still not perfect. It does have some wobble that's visible at high magnification, but it's much better than the cheaper ones I tried. It came with its own stepper motor that's a relatively ordinary two-phase stepper with only 200 steps per revolution, but it still gives good precision because the worm gear has a 66 to 1 reduction, so it takes 66 revolutions of the motor to rotate the subject 360 degrees. On top of the rotation stage, I have a small manual XY stage that's adjusted with a hex driver, and it lets me fine-tune the position of the subject relative to the axis of rotation. On top of that, I have a very small ball head, which was meant for photography, but I cut off the quarter 20 stud and drilled the aluminum ball to accept a fitting for a lure lock syringe needle base. I mount my specimens on blunt tip dispensing needles that I lightly spray paint flat black, and this quick release fitting lets me swap subjects quickly and easily. I store them in pill bottles with the same kind of quick release fitting attached to the lid, so it's a nice system for mounting small specimens like this. There's a big trade-off with having all these axes mounted together because it gives me a very versatile motion system, but at the expense of rigidity. Each time we add an axis, that's another point at which things can move in ways that aren't 100% controlled. And that doesn't matter much at relatively low magnifications like this, but as we increase the magnification, it also increases the effect of any uncontrolled motion. I'm getting good results with this system, up to about 10x optical magnification, but if I were to go any higher than that, I'd try to reduce the number of axes in order to make the system more rigid. Well, that covers the five motion stages, and now I'll go over the CNC controller that drives them. Here's my motion control board. It has a Raspberry Pi computer over here. This connects to my home Wi-Fi network so it can provide a user interface using web browser, and it runs the high-level Clipper software that processes G-code and sends commands over this USB cable down to the Big Tree Tech Octopus control board that actually runs the motion control. This Big Tree Tech Octopus controller board sells for about 50 bucks. They're available on Amazon, and it's designed to run a 3D printer. So it's got a lot of outputs that I'm not using to control various parts of printers and, and sensors and so on, uh, but it's quite versatile. And it's got uh, up to eight different stepper motor outputs. I'm using the first three for my X, Y, and Z axes, and then I'm one, using this one normally used for an extruder for the rotation axis, and then the one over here I'm using for my focus axis. I'm shooting video, so I don't actually need to control the shutter release on the camera electronically. But if I did, like if I were doing more conventional focus stacking, I would use one of the fan outputs on this board. And you can't connect those to a camera directly, but you could connect the fan output to a little opto isolator. And then from there, you can go to a shutter release on, on most digital cameras. The Octopus control board has the ability to support little plug-in stepper motor drivers. So you can connect stepper motors directly to the board then, but with, uh, with the five-phase stepper motors that I'm using, that doesn't work. Um, I need these special uh, motor drivers that I'll talk about in a moment. And so I just have these little adapter boards that give me uh, external wires coming out with the step and direction pulse signals. The Vexta DFR1507A drivers take uh, basic pulse and direction signals like most stepper drivers and, and a stepper and neighbor signal and then they have micro-stepping settings, and then these five connections to go to the five leads on the five-phase stepper motor. They also have little potentiometers that set the current applied to the stepper motor while running and while stopped. The driver I'm using for the two-phase stepper motor on the rotation axis is a DM542T 
uh, digital stepper driver from Stepper Online. I've tried a number of different stepper drivers and this is one of the smoother ones I've found, so I'm pretty happy with it. I've got two different power connections coming in from two power supplies. One that runs all of the electronics and then a separate power supply that drives the actual stepper motor uh, current. Keeping the supplies separate that way is generally a good idea because the stepper motors can have uh, quite large current draw intermittently and we don't want that noise interfering with uh, the more sensitive electronics. The Octopus control board has a lot of other I.O. connections for things like limit switches that I haven't hooked up yet. And if you follow the link to my website, I've got links to the documentation on that so you can see all of the various capabilities it has. As I mentioned, I'm using the Clipper software to run the motion control. And you can find a lot more about it out at clipper3d.org. So I won't try to duplicate all of that information here. I will put some links out on my website to uh, some tutorials and other things that I found helpful in uh, installing and getting started with Clipper. There are many different user interfaces available for Clipper, and the one I'm using is called Mainsail. And what you're looking at is a web page that is provided by a little web server running on my Raspberry Pi computer. And it is designed to run a 3D printer, so we have a tool head and an extruder, and I'm just using that software for motion control instead. Uh, the tool head section has some of the simplest functions, like these buttons will jog the tool head, or in this case, my uh, motion stage by varying amounts. So if I click this plus one button, it will jog the x-axis by one millimeter to the right. I'm using the extruder axis for my rotation, and I have it calibrated in degrees. So even though it says filament length in millimeters, that's actually degrees. So I can select 45 degrees, and uh, an extrusion feed rate, and then retract or extrude is actually rotating my rotation axis by a corresponding number of degrees. I have my Raspberry Pi set up as a file server so that I can mount it as a network drive and directly edit files that are on the Raspberry Pi from my computer. And this is my printer config file. I'll post this out on my website so you can take a look at it, though it, you know, if you want to do something like this, you'll probably want different settings. But uh, in the printer config file, you define the basic motion control parameters, X, Y, and Z axes, the stepper pins, and so on. And then I also down here have the extruder axis set up for my rotation axis and calibrated in degrees instead of millimeters. For the focus axis, I'm using stepper driver number seven, and this is set up as a manual stepper. So in Clipper, you can set a manual stepper uh, and use a separate special command in a G-code file to move the manual stepper, in this case uh, called focus, and that's how I change the focus point of the optics. The mainsail interface shows this panel up here with a list of all of the G-code files uh, that I've stored on the device, and I can uh, click on one to run it but we're gonna set up a little program and I'll show you how I do it. I start out by positioning the X, Y, Z axes manually to my, start, my desired starting location. And I have this button uh, set up via the config file to simply zero out all of the axes. It doesn't, normally it would do a homing operation. I don't use that. And so it just zeroes all the axes out, zero, zero, zero. Next, I wanna figure out the ending point. And to do that, I'm going to jog the X, Y, Z axes and the rotation to an interesting position uh, of the subject. So first let's rotate the subject by 45 degrees using the extrude button. So my subject rotated by 45 degrees, but now it's kind of off center and out of focus. So next I'll jog the uh, X and Y axes a little bit and just kind of experiment to try to get them to a position that, uh, that looks good. And again, we don't have to get too fancy for a demo here, but just to show you generally how I do it. I'm gonna add a little Z offset as well, just for fun. Maybe a little more Y. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I've got it into kind of the ending position of my shot. And so my, my video shot that I'm gonna capture is from that origin starting position. And the ending position, I have, I've gone X2, y 2.3, z 0 0.1, and I've extruded by four, 45 degrees. So we're gonna set up a G-code command to execute that move. 
So here in the text editor, I've created a little G-code program with just a couple commands to set it into absolute XYZ and relative extruder. Those probably aren't necessary because that's actually how it's already set up. But I want to set up a G-code command now to move to the coordinates that I uh, experimentally determined that I want to move the part to. And so we'll assume that we're starting at the 0, 0, 0 position and we want to go uh, G0. My X over here is uh, 2. So I'll do x 2.0, y 2.3, z 0 0.1. Those are just the coordinates that I experimentally uh, determined seem to look kind of nice for this shot. And then extruder moved 45 degrees because that's my rotation axis. And I need to give it a feed rate. And I'm going to tell it um, we're moving uh, you know, roughly 4 or 5 millimeters. I'm going to give it a feed rate of 20 millimeters per minute. So we should have uh, somewhere on the order of uh, you know, uh, 15 seconds, give or take, for this move. We're going to try it and see how it looks. After it moves to the second position, I'm going to issue a pause command, uh, G4, P1000, and uh, that'll pause for 1,000 milliseconds, uh, just so we can see it. Um, and then now, in my program, I want to go back to the zero position. So I'll go G0, X0, Y0, Z0. And now, because my extruder is relative, it's not zero, it's minus 45 to return it back to where it was. And I'm going to increase the feed rate on this one just to move it back a little faster. So we'll go uh, 40 millimeters per second, uh, per minute. And uh, so that's our G-code program. Let's run it and see how it works. So before I run the program, I'm going to first just manually move uh, back to my zero, zero, zero position. And so uh, that gets us back to the starting position where I, I want to start my shot. Okay, and uh, now let's run the G-code program. Start job, yes, test, and here we go. So we're doing kind of a medium speed uh, move and rotation. And so it's moving all four axes at once. Um, pause for a second and then move a little bit faster uh, coming back. Now the, the maximum movement speed is actually limited in the config file, so it may not have moved back quite uh, twice as fast, and you can adjust those settings. So that's how I set up a simple motion control program. Obviously you can get as complicated as you want, uh, but often I'm using very simple programs like this because for filming a single shot, I'm, I'm generally trying to do a fairly simple motion. Well, I hope you found this interesting and useful, and if you'd like to get more information, just check the link in the video description uh, or go out to my website at brainwright.com where I've got a page with more details, parts lists, and links to more information about the hardware and software. Thanks for watching.